Hello and welcome to Arirang News Break. It's Tuesday, September 13th. Live from Seoul, I'm Han Dan. Korea was hit by two powerful earthquakes last night, the second being the strongest tremor ever recorded in the country. President Park Geun-hye was quick to ask her ministers to check up on important facilities and prepare for future emergencies. Our Song ji has more on that and other issues brought up at today's cabinet meeting. First on the president's agenda were the 5.1 and 5.8 magnitude tremors that shook the country's southeastern region Monday night. Saying that Korea is no longer safe from earthquakes, President Park called for a full review and monitoring of the nation's major infrastructure, including its nuclear reactors. She also ordered prompt and thorough research and recovery measures. 주요 시설에 대한 지진 방제 대책을 전면 재검토함으로써 재점검함으로써 앞으로 혹시 발생할지 모를 더큰 규모의 지진에도 철저히 대비해 주기를 바랍니다. 아울러 지진으로 발생한 피해에 대해서는 피해 조사단을 현지에 파견해서 피해 현황과 그 원인을 신속하게 조사하고 조기에 수습해서 국민 불편이 최소화될 수 있도록 해 주시기를 바랍니다. Moving on to North Korea's fifth nuclear test conducted last Friday, the president said Seoul must prepare its own practical countermeasures against North Korean threats. 우리 정부와 군은 한미 간 군사 협조 체제를 더욱 긴밀하게 유지하고 북한이 우리 영토를 향해 핵을 탑재한 미사일을 한 발이라도 발사하면 그 순간 북한 정권을 끝장내겠다는 각오로 고도의 응징 태세를 유지하기 바랍니다. 또한 주한 미군의 사드 배치와 함께 우리 군이 독자적으로 추진하는 북한 핵 미사일 위협 대응책도 더욱 신속하게 추진하기를 바랍니다. Park pledged as president to take all necessary measures to protect the people and the nation, and called for unity once again, stressing the need for that for national security. Despite the difficulties on the economy and security fronts, President Park invited the nation to celebrate the Chuseok holiday beginning on Wednesday with trust in the government and the military. Song ji Arirang News. The 5.1 and subsequent 5.8 magnitude quake that hit Korea last night is probably one of the most talked about issues here in the country today. Authorities say seismic activities connected to yesterday's quakes are over, but mild aftershocks may continue for a few days. Woo jong has the latest. The Korea Meteorological Administration says any significant seismic activity linked to Monday's powerful tremor is now over. And according to the head of the agency, Ko yun it's unlikely a stronger earthquake will hit Korea anytime soon. He said the aftershocks, of which there have been over 200 so far, have all been under a magnitude of 3.0. And though tremors could continue for three or four more days, they are becoming weaker. But amid lingering public concern, the Korea National Park Service has ordered its regional offices to close off public access to national parks until further notice. Officials will check for any damage to the facilities and trails before making a decision on reopening them. Monday's quakes claimed no lives, but 21 people were injured as buildings rocked from side to side and objects fell off shelves. Over 300 cases of property damage were reported in Gyeongsangbuk-do province alone. Nuclear reactors in the area were not seriously affected, but some reactors were taken offline as a precautionary measure late Monday night. Although another strong earthquake isn't expected to strike again soon, the Meteorological Agency says the possibility of about 6.0 magnitude quake hitting the country always exists. In case of an earthquake, Korea's Public Safety Ministry recommends citizens crawl under tables to protect themselves from falling objects. Citizens are also advised to evacuate to open places like parks and avoid using elevators on their way out. Oh Jong-hee, Arirang News. Seoul and Washington's representatives to the long-stalled six-party talks met this morning to discuss ways to counter North Korea's ongoing provocations. After a closed-door meeting at Seoul's foreign ministry, the two officials agreed to work on new measures not only in the UN Security Council but also on the bilateral level and with Japan. 
South Korea's sixth party representative Kim Hong-yoon said an environment has to be created in which North Korea has no choice but to change, adding that another nuclear test cannot be ruled out. Washington's top nuclear envoy Sung Kim and China, Pyongyang's closest ally, clearly understands the need for new measures. There have been questions as to whether Beijing would cooperate fully in drafting a new Security Council resolution on the issue. Korea's job market picked up speed in August. Statistics Korea says the country added 387,000 new jobs last month from a year ago, bringing the total number of employed to 26.5 million. Last month's figure marks an improvement from July when the number of new jobs fell below the 300,000 mark. The ministry says the pickup comes on the back of the base effect from increased employment in the wholesale and retail industries after they were hit hard by the MERS outbreak last year as well as improved job growth in the construction sector. However, it isn't good news for everyone. The youth jobless rate stood at 9.3 percent last month, marking the highest monthly figure for August since 1999. The government's ongoing corporate restructuring drive is also taking a toll on regions where the country's shipbuilding industries are concentrated. The jobless rate in Ulsan came to 4 percent, while the figure in Gyeongsangnam-do province sat at 3.7 percent. It's that time of the year again when Koreans brace the traffic to get together with their loved ones for some family time. The three-day Chuseok or the Korean Thanksgiving holiday starts tomorrow and traffic heading out of Seoul is expected to build this afternoon as people head to their hometowns. The traffic agency says more than 37 million people, around three-quarters of the entire population, will be on the move by car, bus, train or plane over the Chuseok holiday. With 80 percent of people planning to travel by car, heavy congestions are expected on southbound expressways, with traffic jam peaking between 7 and 8 p.m. tonight as people knock off work. Plenty of Koreans are leaving the country as well. Incheon International Airport says it expects to process a daily average of 160,000 passengers from Tuesday through Sunday. And that is Arirang News Break for today. Thank you for watching. Don't miss our evening newscast for more in-depth coverage on the quake and more.